G'day, how you going? So, spring's here. <laughs> I'm at Parramatta Wisteria Gardens. And just for old school, that's going back to my roots about six, seven years ago. I've got my beautiful kit combination, twin kit. <laughs> the 14 to 42 and the 40 to 150. So everyone who's a micro four thirds loser like me will know the old classic kit, twin kit combination. And uh, I just thought I'd bring that out. And if you want to add something to that, you know, entry level twin kit, um, get yourself a macro lens, which is 60 millimeters. That's the other thing I've been doing, just a bit of macro, just walking the dog. I've got Jerry here. Ready? Yeah. Jerry. Jerry. Here's Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Huh. It's the beginning of spring, Jerry. Be careful with the microphone, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hmm? Spring. Let's go for a walk then. So I started off with this little one, which is 14 to 42, which is the standard focal length that you get for just everyday stuff when you're a beginner. Uh, and that's a beauty. This one, little pancake one's really good. And then I moved on to my little macro, uh, just did some macro shots around. So I've already done that. That's really good. It's really interesting. It's very hard actually, because you've got to be so steady and stuff like that. But other than you know if if you can get a good or a bigger aperture because this is this is a 2.8 so you've got to be it's like a real sliver of a bloody stupid uh, focal um, depth of field if you can get a higher aperture my shaky hands and if you get good enough light and you can get the shutter speed really high but it, even just going like that so macro is a whole new area to learn but now i'm going to flip over to the uh 40 to 150 which is like a super telephoto um, which is because it's really it's like a 80 to 300 and in full frame for terms that's ridiculous <laughs> for such a small lens but that's the beauty obviously everyone knows of micro four thirds it's uh, light compact uh, if I had a 300 millimeter equivalent in full frame you know I'd be like that bloke over there <laughs> with a humongous lens all right, let's try this and start walking around again. Jerry. start photography 
You want that kind of um, range, you know, you want that full range from all the way, you know, from 28 to 300, just to experiment with and to advance. Because when you're with the 14 to 42, it can get a bit boring after a while. And when you do get that 150, 440 to 150, it really expands your photography. Uh, because nothing, there's nothing better than getting up close to something, you know what I mean? Jerry, no! Jerry, Jerry, pretty in pink. Everyone's pretty in pink, Jerry. Expand your range with a good, you know, super telephoto and a macro. So those three little combinations. If you do want to get into the primes, um, all that's for is just to get sharper images because primes are relatively, you know, I mean, it's debatable, but. Primes um, are better lenses because they're dedicated to that focal length. It trains your eye into that particular focal length. The wide angle zoom and then the telephoto zoom and chuck a macro in and then you've got a you got yourself a topic for a video today. <laughs> Jerry, I have no idea what I was uh, gonna film today and I've done spring so much, although today is beautiful. I thought I'd um, have to come up with a, a topic for this week's video. I'm only joking. I mean, I mean, it's, I'm true what I'm saying. It, if you're an entry level, which I consider myself, you know, probably beyond that already, because I, I reckon I've learnt enough to become a enthusiast amateur. I wouldn't say I'm professional, because no one's paid me yet. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You know, composition probably does it the best. If you, can, if you can nail that composition and you can nail focus, you're 75% the way there. Jerry, what the hell am I talking about? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'll put some photos up and uh, this is spring. Spring's here. Hey, Jerry. Yes. Huh. Jerry, spring's here. Huh. Yes, good girl. All right, let's go this way, Jerry. Jerry. Okay, so I come back the next day and I've bought my full frame camera. <laughs> this is the OM. <laughs> This is the Canon 5D Mark II. So you want to shoot micro four thirds, but you don't want to miss out on the full frame and you're only beginning. Well, you've come to the right channel. <laughs> uh, I know you're all here for Jerry, but about five or six years ago, a camera called the OMD EM1 Mark II came out and it is a beauty. It has everything that you need. Uh, for beginners, uh, intermediate and even professionals. Even today as a professional, the OMD EM1 Mark II can do it. 
Uh, but if you, you're thinking to yourself, well, that's micro four thirds, that's only for losers. Well, you'd be wrong there, but <laughs> let's just play with that. You want to get a full frame, but full frame's too bloody expensive and you're only starting out. So get yourself a uh, 5D Mark II. <laughs> that's for 2008, and I'm telling you now, it takes pictures better than, you know, almost uh, as good as the uh, R cameras these days, the R5 or whatever. I mean, it's, I mean I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. Image quality is image quality. This is 20 megapixels. Dynamic range, probably not as much, but still, uh, it's a bit of a clunker and it's a DSLR. Can't choose between full frame and micro four thirds? Have both. <laughs> Well, at these price points, you can because the EM1 Mark II is around 500 bucks these days, Australian, and this is around 400 bucks Australian. And because they're so old now, the lenses um, you can get a good kit lens, and um, and that'll do you until you want to upgrade. Because these still take the EF lenses, which are still um, relevant today. Okay, so it's way busier than yesterday, and uh, a bit of a wind up today sun's not that good but that's all right because i've got full frame uh, <laughs> i don't know if that means anything here's the shot i took yesterday what's it look like full frame the beauty of the olympus i could get down low now i can but i'm gonna break my back because the old dreaded flippy screen doesn't exist in 2008. You know the flippy screen didn't exist in 2008. Just composing, composing, bingo. Jerry, the flippy screen didn't exist in 2008. So I've just got it on uh, aperture priority. I've got uh, the old crappy 28 to 80 kit lens, plastic fantastic, that just comes with every Canon that you find from 10 years ago. There's different versions of it, I've got two of them because I had my one from the 90s with my film camera and then the one I got with this. That's the thing with, even if you buy old cameras for dirt cheap, it's the lenses where they get you, so you just got to be wary of that. Just buy an old camera and just get a really good old EF lens, especially for this. And for micro four thirds, there's so many lenses you can choose from and they're relatively cheap. It's the full frame lenses that are expensive. Let's just frame it up. Leading path with a million people. No. Nah. Maybe if I, what if I line all these people up and, and have some sort of symmetry? Here's a solitary person with the house. Bit of camera shutter shock there. That's the other thing with uh, DSLR from the... There's no image stabilization. Not on this lens. It, it's all in the lens. Now what you really need here is a model. Unfortunately, I don't have a model. It looks a bit weird stealing other people's models here. <laughs> I steal other people's models for my own artistic endeavors just to have someone in the shot because these flowers they can they're nice but they can be a bit boring Jerry get out of there good girl Jerry good girl I guess that's what street photography is you're stealing someone's image unbeknownst to them Jerry this way good girl good girl What's that culture where you, you take a photo and you steal their soul? Is that, uh, I think it's some indigenous people think that. I read it, I read it somewhere. Something about... They believe if you take their photo, it takes their soul or something. I don't know. Speaking of creepy stuff. There's those bats again. Okay, I need uh, F22. I'm going to block the sun. Starburst. 
block the sun a little, just a little smidge. Jerry, this way. Good girl. Starburst, Jerry. You see the starburst? So that's the uh, starburst. What you do there is you close the aperture as much as you can so you get a little bit of light in. Jerry, this way. You need to just a little bit on the side of the sun. You don't want full sun. You want the sun to be obscured just a little bit on the rim, just like a, like just like Peter McKinnon's uh, award-winning photo with Red Bull, <laughs> where the uh, he got lucky because uh, he was standing in the right spot. The other photographer that was with him, the other two, they were standing on the left-hand side of him. So when they were framing it up, they uh, they only got. They got the, the sun on the other side, whereas the old Pete... <laughs> now I must admit, that was a top video. Uh, um, as much as people bag him, I think it's the tall poppy syndrome. He's really good, the old Peter McKinnon. He's very likeable. He's a, he's a nice bloke. He's Canadian, so Canadians are really nice people. And anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, he got, uh, got lucky with that one. He, even he said he got lucky with that but it's a bit of, it's it's you make your own luck if you if you haven't watched it yet it's called the bucket shot too why did i start talking about that jerry anyway let's get back to my channel he's a ripper <laughs> it's exciting jerry it's an exciting photo <laughs> I'm too hard on myself. Okay, Jerry, let's sit down and take photos of you. Because you know what? I forgot. You're my model. Huh? <laughs> yes, Jerry, you're my model, Mama. Hey. I know, Jerry. Let's get some let's get you over to makeup and wardrobe. Clean you up a bit. I told that lady in wardrobe to clean your eyes out. She doesn't listen. Jerry, you're so beautiful. Look, Jerry, if we don't take any good photos today, at least we had a nice day out and the sun's just come through the clouds. Perfect. What do you think? I'll get you off the leash because that's hard to crop out later. All right. You get over there and we'll take a photo. Jerry, depth of field. But you want the you want the trees there, Jerry. And you want some separation. Good girl, Jerry. Bloody hard. Break my neck, Jerry. Okay, so I've come back uh, the next week because this week is the 21st of September and it's the festival actually, there's a festival on and what I did this time, the original time that I came but forgot my battery, Gary was the bazooka, the 100 to 400 so this is actually a really good macro lens or a really bloody close lens as I call it um, the short focusing distance is really good and some of the tricks I can do with some of the flowers like this one, it's unreal. It's actually a handy little tool. So normally I would suggest getting the 75 to 300 because that's smaller and more compact and cheaper. But if your budget goes up, get this uh, 100 to 400. All right, Jerry, you ready to go take some photos?